Welcome back, everybody. Thrasher here. We've been spending the last couple of videos practicing and learning the skills and the tools needed to apply Newton's second law. We're continuing that here, but we're looking at the example of what to do when forces aren't acting simply horizontally or vertically. We've actually done this already when we were learning about velocity. So we're not going to relearn or go over the process or the, the reasonings why behind breaking vectors into components, but we're going to see how it applies for forces, okay? Now, what I'm going to show you first is actually a list that should be familiar because we saw something very similar to this already. It's kind of the steps for setting up Newton's second law. We draw a free body diagram, we choose and we label our positives in negative directions, maybe something kind of like this, okay? Before we were then trying to set up the sum of the forces, whether an object was accelerating, so it equals ma, or whether it's in equilibrium, so the net force is gonna total out to be zero, and then, you know, do some algebra. But I've actually added something. So I've added a number here. I don't know if you've written these down maybe as notes for your class, but it's almost like a step in the beginning. Before we actually set up the sum of the forces, we're going to break any necessary forces into components. And we'll see what that means in a second, because that's going to be a necessary step to successfully do the following one, setting up Newton's second law for horizontal and vertical motion, okay? So let's learn how by doing a problem, right? Let's get right into this, chopping some onions. It says that you're pulling a sled, okay? We're pulling this sled right here. We're gonna ignore any friction. And very simply, it asks us to write out Newton's second law for the sled in both the x and the y direction. So here I have the sled, there's no friction, okay? But it's being pulled not simply to the left or right, not simply up or down, but at an angle. Okay, let's go about seeing how to solve this. Okay, so first step, I'm gonna draw a free body diagram for the sled, not for the person, not for the package. We'll ignore this little, you know, present that's sitting on it. Let's just assume it's just the sled. This whole thing is just the sled. All right, what forces? Well, we're here on Earth, right? So there has to be a force of weight. The ice, or whatever it is, is supporting it. So let's say there's a normal force. There's also a force from this string. Now remember, this string is applying a tension force. That's normally what we call it. And that force acts in the same direction as the string. This person is pulling up and to the right. So this string is actually acting like this. This is how you should draw it on your free body diagram. Uh, clue, we never draw components on a free body diagram. You just draw the forces, like the actual forces that are acting on it. So this is it, okay? Again, there's no friction, so there's nothing pointing to the left. But there we go. Now, if this was a normal problem, maybe the next step would be, let's make sure I identify my positive directions. Let's say up is positive and right is positive. And then let's just go ahead and try setting up the sum of the forces. Let's do it first in the x direction. There's my colon. What are the forces in the x direction? Well, there's tension, but kind of. I mean kind of because tension isn't simply acting horizontally, it's acting kind of up and to the right. So, gosh, I don't know, maybe I'd set that equal to ma. We're not given a whole lot, there's no numbers in this problem. I don't actually know if it's accelerating or not, but I'm not really sure actually what to plug in right there. Well, let's try setting up the sum of the forces in the y direction, some of the forces in the y. Okay, well, I have the normal force, that's positive, the uh, vector is pointing up. I'm going to subtract the weight because that's certainly acting down. That down is negative, but, you know, tension is kind of acting up. Uh-oh, this is my problem, okay? Tension is acting both horizontally and vertically, so how do I actually go about and solve it? I need to break it into components, and it's very similar to breaking, say, velocity into components. Here I'm going to draw my original t vector, and maybe just to keep my, uh, my colors the same, here's the fraction, the component of tension that's acting in the x direction. I'm going to label that tx. And then using yellow, here's the fraction of the tension that's acting in the y direction. It's okay that I do this because I'm not fundamentally changing my values because tx plus ty, that's equal to t when I add them vectorally with the Pythagorean theorem. But oh my gosh, what the heck is tx equal to? You know, you might have to bust out the old Sokotoa. I've been doing this so long, I just kind of remember it. For the side that is adjacent, that's using the cosine version. So if I did cosine, that would actually get me that cosine of theta is equal to adjacent tx divided by t. So what is tx equal to? 
it's t times the cosine of theta. This right here is the fraction of tension that I would plug in right here. It's okay if you want to write out your sum of the forces first like this. It's the fraction of x that's acting in that horizontal. And here, it'd be plus, because it's acting upwards, the fraction of y. That's okay. You could do that. But what am I ultimately going to plug in? Because the problem's not going to tell you, like, the horizontal fraction is equal to this. They're not going to say that. Maybe they just say, oh, the tension? The person is pulling with 20 newtons. So we have to plug in the chunk, the piece, that's acting horizontally and the chunk and piece that's acting vertically. So let's do that in the y component. Again, this is the opposite side of my triangle. That's the sine, but if you're not sure, bust it out. I know that ty, just from doing this for a long time, is going to equal t sine of theta. How do I know? Because sine of theta is equal to the opposite, that's ty, divided by the hypotenuse. If you're having trouble with these right triangles, that's okay, but you should get help from your teacher, or you should go back and practice. t sine theta. See? That's how I got it right here. So this is going to be what I plug in right here, okay? I'm going to make a little space, and then I'm just going to reset and plug those in, okay? Give me one moment. All right, I had hit pause in the video, and all I did was I moved the free body diagram over. I removed a little bit of the trig work. This was me solving for those fractions of the tension force. And now I'm just going to plug this in. So again, if I focus in the x direction, so what would I write for tx? It's going to be this. So I have t cosine of theta equals ma. And technically, this should be the acceleration in the x direction. Okay, What am I going to plug in right here? I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to have n minus w plus. Again, it's plus because this fraction is acting upwards. t sine of theta, t sine of theta. And that equals ma, move my head a little bit, ma in the y direction. So that's our setup. Sorry if the video paused and kind of reset. I had to move things around to get my technology to work out. But this is how we do it. So still making our free body diagrams, still setting positive and negative directions, still writing out the forces acting horizontally, set them equal to ma, and the same thing in the y direction. Okay. But now, if there's a force that's acting at some angle, we're going to need to break that into components. And that fraction, that's what goes in. So not tough in that there's no new physics that you have to worry about, but you know it takes a little extra time to do this mathematically and then plug on in. Again, there's no other numbers in here. You know, we're not told anything, but you know, potentially if we could calculate the weight of the sled, you know, maybe we'd be able to calculate the tension or sine of theta, or, you know, whatever. It just really depends. But this is how we set it up. Just know if there's a force acting in an angle, you have to break it into components, very similar to what we've done in the past. That's it. That's the only additional strategy that you might have to utilize when applying Newton's second law. So long.